ginger pork ribs sound for dinner. I think it sounds great. And today, for Taste of Home, that's exactly what we're going to do. What we need to do first is line a pan, just like this, with some heavy duty aluminum foil. And I bought boneless ribs because I wanted them to be nice and tasty and meaty. And we're going to rub them with garlic. I want to show you real quickly the easiest way to cut your garlic up. Cut off the end. Just put a little slice through the skin. And it pulls right off, just like that. Talk about making that house smell fabulous. Starting with garlic, how can you lose, right? We're going to kind of just rub this garlic right over all of our meat. And what I like to do is once I'm done kind of rubbing this garlic, do like two or three of them. Get some nice flavor in there. I'll just leave this inside as a nice surprise for somebody else. Because what we're going to wind up doing is letting these cook for about an hour uh, at about 350 degrees covered so they get a good nice head start. Look at this. Let's cut right in here. Mm, yum. Cover it right up. So before we stick these into the oven, we need to cover them up. They've got the garlic in there. Life is good for these little pork ribs. Nice and tucked in, one hour, and we'll be back to check on these. All right, now our ginger oven pork ribs have been in a 350 degree oven for an hour. Remember, we rubbed them with garlic. Oh, so delicious. And of course, naturally, there's gonna be some juice in the bottom of this. We're gonna use that for a basting sauce. So I've lined another pan over here with more foil. And we're just going to move these right over here. These are going to be so delicious, so tender, because they still have to cook another hour. They will knock your socks off. Look, there's a piece of the garlic that we had in there. Somebody's going to be happy with that one. Here's our half a cup of juice that was in the bottom. We're going to mix that with six tablespoons of this orange marmalade. Count them out with me. One, two, three, four, five, six. We also need six tablespoons of soy sauce. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two tablespoons of ketchup. Two, oh, let's put the rest of it in there. One tablespoon of fresh lemon. I always hold it like this so the seeds don't get in. I think that's about enough. Also a little bit of coarse black pepper. It smells so good because you can smell the orange marmalade, you can smell the soy sauce and the lemon juice and next we're going to do the ginger. Have you ever used ginger before? It's so easy and you know it seems kind of hard unless you know the tricks. What we're going to do is cut off a piece like this. Oh so good. And take a spoon to peel off the outside skin. And it just comes right off for you, see? It's much easier than trying to use a peeler or anything like that. Now we need one and a half teaspoons of freshly grated ginger, so I would say that this piece is about the right size. And we're going to use our microplane so we get nice, fine, great. And what happens is that with this is that we're pumping up the oven to 375 degrees and we're going to baste this sauce right onto our ribs every 10 minutes and you turn them over every once in a while. And now we'll just whisk this, this all together. Man, I wish you could just smell this. Can you guys smell it? Can you smell it? Orange, ginger, soy. We're going to baste these. It's a nice thin juice. You can serve these with potatoes. You can serve it with rice pilaf. Uh, because it's got the ginger, you could do uh, fried rice, which is what I'm going to use today. I'm going to turn them over and make sure we get both sides. They go back in the oven uncovered. And we'll baste these for another hour. Let's go back in the oven, little ribs. All right, you guys, we've been glazing our ginger oven pork ribs for an hour, and look how beautiful they are. The color, you can see the little pieces of orange in there from the marmalade. And we're gonna just do one last thing. 
I'm going to chop up some green onion. We're going to sprinkle those right over the top, just like that. Lovely. And last but not least, of course, since it has a little Asian flair to it, we're going to add a little sesame seeds to the top. Ready? Oh, beautiful. Now that's a taste of home. I'm Angel Shannon, and I think it's time to eat. I'll see you next time here in my kitchen.